Holy smokes, what the? Oh my gosh, it's time for the Golf Kingdom. And we've got a great show for you now that I'm awake. Let's bring it in. We're gonna start off as always with our build it segment. We're gonna build you a better sequence in your swing. After that, we're leaving the studio. I'm gonna go out on course and help you with your fairway bunker game. We're gonna follow that up as you see with our, our keep it simple kiss segment where I'm gonna give you something simple to help your game. Sliding down to the bottom of the show, I've got the hottest thing in golf for you. We're gonna use Hot Wheels cars to help your putting. And as always, we're gonna close with it's a time to rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here at the Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenturia Insurance, tailor-made and executive air conditioning. As always, it's our build it segment to start things here on the Golf Kingdom, and I'm gonna help you build a better sequencing in your backswing. Now, when you pick up golf magazines and you go out on your own and watch all these videos, one word keeps getting hammered home into your golf brain, and that's turn. Turn, 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 turn hips to your shoulders. Heck, as a tour player, my coach one time kept telling me, I need more turn, I need more turn, and when I watched my videos, boy, I saw plenty of turn but turning too much and turning at the wrong time leads to bad sequencing. I'm gonna explain bad sequencing and bad turn, and then I'm gonna help you build it the right way. So let's grab a club here and talk about what you do wrong. Now, Daredevil, let's come to the wide screen view here so you can help me see what the, is going on with this turn thing. So everybody, you're told, turn the hips, turn the shoulders going back. And your first move is, I'm gonna turn everything going back. Well, what happens is when you turn everything going back, the arms tend to follow and twist around you. Or the second bad thing that happens is, is you reach maximum hip turn too soon in your swing. It's possible to reach hip turn and turn too soon. Now we have a problem in that your swings are gonna be really short and abbreviated, or you're gonna reach maximum turn and then your hands and arms keep going. We have all this hands and arm run out and that leads to lots of hands and arms coming down. Let's talk about getting that sequence right. And one thing I have my players understand is the movement going back is arms first. That way you feel the club head. You know where the club head is. If I spin, I can't feel this. I wanna know what the face is doing the whole time going back. So the first move back is gonna be hands, arms, club. Very simple. It's like a big putting stroke. Hands, arms, club hands, arms, club. That's the sequence right there, boom. Then we get a little turn out of the hips and a little turn out of the shoulders. There is no spike in speed between hips and shoulders. They don't snap going back. It's a smooth move. So it's hands and arms, and then a little hips and shoulders to get to the top with about 45 degrees of hip turn and the shoulders around 90. One simple way to think about the hips is this. If I simply said to you, turn your back that direction and put your shoulders over your trail shoe, you would simply stand here and go like this. You'd move your shoulders over your shoe and you'd turn your back that direction. Well, look, my hips actually turned. I didn't move them. In order to move my shoulders here and get my back turned to the target, the hips are gonna give and get out of the way. They don't turn, they don't fire going back. They just kind of give and get out of the way. So understanding sequence, it's very, very important. Hands and arms first, and then let the hips naturally turn as the shoulders wind. This will help you get consistent going back and allow you to deliver lots of power coming down. Now, we've done this work in the studio. Let's jump out on the golf course because I got something cool to show you out there. Well, 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 dun, dun, dun. Here we are in the fairway bunker. Maybe we hit a good tee shot that was right up the edge of the fairway, it took a bad bounce and it rolled down in the bunker and oh no, I've got this giant lip in front of me. I've got two keys in the bunker that are gonna help you get out every time. Whether you're close to the lip or back there away from the lip, these two things are thoughts you need to think when you're playing these shots. Now when we get in the bunker, our focus is on, I'm gonna hit this ball solid, I'm gonna hit it solid, I'm not gonna hit the sand, I'm gonna hit a solid shot. And the problem is when we're close to the lip and our only thought is solid, we sometimes hit that little thin one. Oh no! I'm right back where I started. 
That thin one gets us in trouble. Here's your correct thinking in the bunker. Let me put this back in play. It was almost in my divot. Instead of thinking only solid, I want you to think solid to fat. A fat shot will clear the lip and get way down there. Yes, I want to hit it solid, but if I don't catch this solid, I want to catch it a little heavy. I want to get a little extra sand if I don't catch it solid, because it'll go way down the fairway. It might look like this. There we go. I caught it pretty solid, maybe a little heavy. It won't go max distance, but look, I took a big pass through the sand. Either way, if I caught it solid or a little heavy, that was going to get down there and get way down the fairway. When the lip's in play, pick a club you think you can clear the lip, then think I'm either going to hit it solid or a little heavy. The little heavy one gets out and gets down the fairway. Now, let's go back here where the lip's not in play, and I'll give you a different thought to deal with that one. Okay, now we've moved back in the bunker. The lip's not in play. I've got to have a different thought than when the lip is right in front of me and I've got to make sure I clear it. I'm going to have a different thought and that thought is solid to thin. So when the lip is in play, we're thinking solid to fat. Back here, I'm thinking solid to thin because a thin one will steer, still clear that lip. It'll look like this. So I'm in here. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to hit this solid, but it's no big deal if I pick it and catch it thin because I'm going to clear that bunker regardless of what happens. So there's a really thin bladed one, and look at it, just scream down the fairway. Rolling, 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 rolling. That was a perfect example of thinking solid to thin, and I caught it really thin, and it was a low line drive that went down there. So now, once again, if I get in here, I'm thinking, you know what, the, whatever I can do here to catch it solid is fine. A heavy shot just isn't going to go enough. So solid shot here, here comes a solid one. Man, there's a really good solid one right down the fairway. So when the lip's not in play, we are thinking solid to thin because a thin one will clear the lip and it'll get going way down there. These are two great tips to help your fairway bunker play and will take the fear out of it because you get it out every single time. Everybody's favorite segment is the real short one I do called Keep It Simple Strano. It's my kiss. Mwah, that keeps it easy for you to understand something very simple in golf that will help you a bunch. And here's what I've got today, and it's about hitting your driver. I have my TaylorMade M5 driver here at the Twist Face Technology. And sometimes what I've got to do is fix gaps in your computer code. So if you've seen computer code, it's a bunch of gibberish. But you know what? When you hit the app, it makes the program open and makes it run. I'm going to fix a gap in your computer code when it comes to hitting your driver. And here's the thing to understand, and I seem to be telling players this all the time. You don't hit down on the driver like you do on an iron. The ball is already up on A. Yeah, it's up on a T. It's up off the ground. When we hit it, we sweep up on the driver and catch it and make it launch off the T. Keep in mind, the ball is already up off the ground. We're not trying to hit down. We're not trying to knock the T out of the ground. One simple thing to practice is, Tee up four or five drivers in a row. Team up the same height and just hit them one after another and just try to hit the ball and not the tee. Don't worry about where the ball goes. Try to catch the ball in the upswing, leave the tee there, and launch the ball off the tee. This will help you catch it more solid, eliminate a lot of backspin, and it should pick up some distance for you. So remember, keep it simple. We don't hit down on the driver. We sweep up and knock it right off the tee every time. If you struggle with your hands being too active when you putt, well, Fusion Dynaline Training Aid is what you need to putt better. It clamps on your putter, you drop your alignment stick in the training aid, you put the training trident on the top of it, and then it touches your body and locks your stroke in place. It's impossible to wiggle your hands. Get Fusion Dynaline to control your stroke. Visit FusionPutting.com, place your order, and get free shipping today. On The Golf Kingdom, we're about helping you with every part of your game, and right now I want to help you with your mental game. I want to help you get a little mentally tougher on the golf course. Now, I've played on a lot of programs as a professional with a lot of successful people, and I tell you what, they were really nervous playing with me, and I always kind of diffused the situation right on the first tee by telling them, you know what, I'm not going to judge you as a person by how you hit the golf ball. Let's go have fun. Now, I'm talking to you 
when you're on the golf course, if you get out there and you're kind of a chicken when you're playing and you're kind of hitting all these shots cock. and you're kind of cock, cock. Ch- cock. you're kind of a chicken on the, are, really cock. a chicken cock. on the golf course. You're a chicken, cock. huh? Cock. Okay. Cock. Let's just kind of take care of this cock. whole chicken thing on the golf course. Cock. What do you say? Cock. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the chicken on the golf course now. I'm going to help you here. We got rid of him in the studio. We got to get rid of him on the golf course also. When you're on the golf course, a couple simple things that will help you be mentally tougher, and I won't have to take a baseball bat to you now. First thing you got to understand is the importance of your routine. Your routine is the thing you fall back on to hit great golf shots under pressure. And people would ask me all the time, Rob, how did you hit golf shots with thousands of people watching you? And the way I did it is, I always focused on my pre-shot routine. I did the same thing every time the same way. So it was no different if there were a thousand people there or if there was one person. Doing your routine helps you do things under pressure and helps you avoid being the chicken that gets the bat. Second thing I want you to do is you have to be paying attention to your thoughts. You've got to fight the negative thoughts. The golf ball is tiny, the golf course is big. It will fit on the fairway. It won't, it won't go off in the water unless you're thinking and worrying about the water. I want you to get up there and have a positive thought. And if you don't, stop, get out and stand there and go, okay, I am going to hit this ball off into the fairway right there and get tough. You've got to get tough with yourself sometimes and get determined and go, I am determined to hit this ball right there. I'm not going to hit anywhere but right there. Get tough, get tough in your brain and get rid of that bad thought. Being positive helps you convert that negative thought to a tough thought and hit a good one. And when you get that thought in your mind, get up there and fight to hit a good shot. This determination will help you under pressure and help you become mentally tough. It's like, like, like Amy Bockerstedt kept telling Gary Woodland, I can do this, I got this. Get up there and tell yourself, I got this, I can do this. Gary Woodland did it in the US Open and you can do it on the course if you get out there and get mentally tough and don't be a chicken and don't make me show up with my back. One of the great things about new technology is we can see things that we couldn't see 20 years ago. And I sure love Google Earth and the ability to show you guys some strategy for playing the golf course. Now golf courses, they're all different and designers do all kinds of crazy different things. Donald Ross from his mounded turtle back greens to Alistair McKenzie with the big greens with the swooping slopes and the impressive bunkering on his courses. Jack Nicholas to the wide open fairways to the narrowing hitting areas as you get in the green. So golf courses are all designed differently and provide interesting challenges for players and you really should analyze the courses you play. If you play the same course all the time, I want you to sit down and analyze it and go, okay, the architect of the course, he's trying to trick me, so what's he doing here? What is he gonna to try to fool me with on this hole? I've got a hole I'm gonna show you, and this is thanks to one of our viewers, Todd Boyle, who said, Rob, I love when you talk about the on-course stuff and you talk about the strategy, or as I say, the strategy. Now, what I've got here is the 16th hole from my home course for my academy is Kelly Plantation Golf Club in Destin, Florida. And we're gonna bring it up on the big screen here, Daredevil. There it is, the 16th hole. Now, it looks like a pretty plain hole. Straight away, no bunkers, no bunkers up by the green, kind of wide open, but it's a little bit of a fooler, and I'm gonna explain how it messes players up, and they make a ton of sixes and sevens here. As you see, the hole's pretty wide in the, in the hitting area, but as it gets up by the green, you have the trees narrowing into the green here. So the trees pinch in, the cart path runs here, and this all slopes off. This is out of bounds. So as you get to the green, it pinches this way and narrows. Now, if this hole plays into the wind, players are back in here hitting four irons, four hybrids, five irons in to a narrowing pinching area, and sometimes even fairway woods. When I give a playing lesson and, this, and players are playing into the wind, into this green, what I will tell them to do is we're going to lay back in this area here and leave ourselves a simple little pitch shot. We're going to take this little treat in hazard out of play and the quick short fence out of bounds out of play on the right. Think about this when you play. Look for if a hole narrows in your, in your landing area, in your target zone, maybe you can play back and simplify and pitch it up there and make par 
or at least make bogey and avoid making sixes, seven, and eights by hitting it in spots you don't want to be. Here in the Golf Kingdom, it's about everything for your game. And one of my favorite segments is our PT Solutions Fitness segment with Leanne. She's always got great things for us, and we're gonna connect with her today and see what she's got to talk about. Hey, Leanne, great to have you on the Golf Kingdom. Hey, Rob, it's a pleasure to be with you on the Golf Kingdom today. Our viewers are always excited to see something great to help them with their fitness. What do you got for us today? So a lot of you golfers out there are suffering from low back pain. Part of that problem is usually hamstring restriction because we sit all day. So one drill that you can do to keep your back uh, from posteriorly pelvic tilting like this is to work on this mobility drill. So you want to keep the club on your head and on your tail and you want to keep your stomach muscles braced and then you're going to hinge forward at your hips and then go until you feel a good stretch in your hamstrings and then come back up and squeeze your buns. This drill will help keep you golf as pain free and playing golf for a long, long time. Well, I've been doing that stretch here in the studio and it feels good on my back and I squeeze my buns when I'm done just like you did. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, until next time, Rob. I love that stretch. It's great and you should do it all the time. And when you're done, I don't think she means squeeze your buns this way. I think she means tighten them as you do that great stretch. And be sure to go visit PT Solutions for all your fitness needs to take care of your body and your golf game. Okay, I'm gonna help you with something that happens before you ever hit the ball, before you ever get the club to slam into the back of the ball. And that's what you do before you hit the ball. And I'm gonna troubleshoot some stuff for you that I've already been working on with my players at the academy. You're gonna get the benefit of what I'm telling them right here. Now, here's what happens a lot, and I get this conversation going on all the time. You'll hit a ball, watch it, rake a ball over, hit it, watch it, and you'll hit maybe a second or third one, and you'll go, these aren't going where I'm aiming. And I'll ask this question. I'll say, how do you know where you're aiming? And they'll say, well, I'm aiming at the, the blue flag over there. I'll be like, well, in order to aim, you have to start behind the ball. You have to get behind the ball and see where you're going. You can't stand here and pull a ball over and go, well, I think I'm aiming at the blue flag, or in this case, between the two trees, or up the left tree line, or up the right tree line to hit a draw. You can't do that. You have to start behind the ball to get your aim right every time. Let's talk about how key that is. When we get back here behind the ball, we can then pick our intermediate target and see our line where we want to go. Now we've got a great little hole here we're looking at with the trees on the left and the right, and you've got the nice little hallway down the middle. This would be a pretty intimidating shot for a lot of y'all. I'm going to help you figure out how to play this and release that intimidation and those nerves. What I want you to do is start behind the ball. Whether you're practicing or playing, it all starts here. This is our office where we organize the shot. Then we walk up here and we execute the shot. Number one, start back here. Pick your spot out in front of the ball you're gonna aim on. It could be a leaf, a bare spot. You know, if you're playing by yourself, there's no rule that says you can't use an alignment stick. Bring your alignment stick in, point it where you wanna go, and see where you're going. So start back here. This is your office, get organized. This is where I'm aiming. This is where I'm going. I've got my intermediate target. Now, your practice swing is gonna take place back here. Practice swing here. We get up here, it's all business. We're executing up here. I've got my line, I'm going right between the trees. I picked a spot that goes between the trees. Now I walk in, my feet are sloppy. I'm not interested in getting them set first. I'm gonna aim where I wanna go, set my feet last. I'm gonna check and make sure I'm aimed over my spot in front of me, then, all I'm gonna focus on is swinging and making sure the ball goes over the spot in front of me. If you do that, you narrow your target. Your funnel gets tighter and you can hit it up these tight holes like this one. Okay, recapping. Whenever we're talking about aim, if you're gonna worry about where you're aiming, it starts here, not up here at the ball. Get your aim here, walk up, take care of business up there, and I guarantee you, you'll hit better shots going where you absolutely think you're aimed.
Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more Pro Pointers from me via your Amazon-enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip, free, with your Amazon-enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. It's time for our pop culture segment. As you can see, we got Hot Wheels going on here. How do Hot Wheels, one of the coolest things ever for kids, help your putting and your golf game? And I'm gonna show you, almost sent that one down backwards. Oh, crash to end on, how much fun is that? How can Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels track specifically help you putt better. I've got a great drill that's gonna make you run up to your attic and start searching for your old orange track. Let's go to the widescreen here, Devil. There, Devil. I'm gonna show you what I've done. I've taken a piece of Hot Wheels track and on the back side of it, not the side I'm sending the cars down, the back side of it, I've colored the rails and put a black dot in the middle. Here's how you use this to help your putting. I'm gonna put this down and I gotta move the yellow car out of the way because it's right in the zone I'm gonna putt in. There we go. Is I take the track and I point it at my hole. All this is gonna allow me to do is not worry about aim. This is a drill for speed. If you struggle with speed, you're gonna do the Hot Wheels track drill because the ball is gonna go where the track's pointed. So I pointed at the hole. All I'm focusing on now is rolling this ball over at the right speed. Boom, right in the middle of the cup. I'm just trying to roll this ball real nice over to that cup. And if I can do that every time, I've got my speed right. The Hot Wheels track drill. It's perfect for working on your speed. Go get your track, set it up, roll the balls the right speed every time, and your putting will improve, and you will be the hottest putter on the planet. Well, it's time to rise in the golf kingdom, and I wanna to talk to you about your past, and specifically maybe your golf past or your life past. One point I wanna make is, don't let your history define your future. And people are always wondering, and they're asking me, how do golfers bounce back from maybe missing a real short putt? Or you're watching them on TV and they hit it in the water, or they hit it way out of bounds, or they hit it way off into the crowd, and then they go on to win the tournament. Well, it's a simple thing. We don't let our history define our future. What's in the past is behind you. Yeah, like they say in The Lion King, yeah, the past can still hurt, but we move on and continue to focus on our future. So on the golf course, what you wanna do is forget that last shot and go on and try to do your best thing with what you can do where you are right now. That's the thing about life is you continue to try to do the next best thing. Always focus on your future. Don't let your past define you. On the golf course, you hit a bad shot, forget about it. I'm gonna go hit a good one now and, and go ahead and maybe win the tournament. Watch the PGA Tour guys. They never let a bad one influence the next ones to come. They may miss a shorty here and there, but they continue to come through. And that's what people wonder about is how in the world, when they've got a three-footer on the last hole, can they make it when maybe they missed a three-footer we saw on TV on the 10th hole? It's because our history never defines our future. Focus on that and things will be great for you on the golf course and off the course. Well, that was a lot of fun on the Golf Kingdom tonight. We helped you with your putting with Hot Wheels cars. Yeah, Hot Wheels cars, Hot Wheel track. We improved your speed and putting, and we even managed along the way to blow up a rubber chicken to help you be mentally tougher. Be sure to go out on social media and follow the Golf Kingdom at the Golf Kingdom on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. We are everywhere you can find us out there. Also, thegolfkingdomtv.com is a great spot for some more things to find out about the show. Now, I'm gonna issue a fun social media challenge for you tonight. Let me show you this video of the reverse golf swing. There you go. It's all in the footwork. I want you to watch the footwork, but it's this, this is called the reverse swing. I want you to take the reverse swing challenge. Hashtag golf kingdom, hashtag reverse swing. Get out there on Twitter or Instagram and post a video of your reverse swing. And I tell you what, the best reverse swing may win a special little prize from us here at the Golf Kingdom. So Twitter, Instagram, 
post your video of the reverse swing, hashtag reverse swing, hashtag golf kingdom, and we'll watch those and enjoy celebrating the best reverse swing out there. And for golf lessons with me, be sure to visit strandogolf.com and book a lesson and we'll have fun working on your game. Thanks for watching me tonight on The Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenturia Insurance, tailor-made and executive air conditioning. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com.